time. Kurt, you turn. Oh, bar is open. The Lomo Lounge is now. Uh, we've, we're flipping that open sign. Folks, come on in. Gather around. Get your drinks. Actually, you know what? I should I should get a beverage. Do you do you need a minute to get a beverage, or are you good? I'm good. Okay, give me two seconds. Jimmy, what would you, uh, we're not going to talk at all about whether we like the movie yet or not. Let's just talk about what, what, what would you, what would you drink with it? What are you, what are you pairing with this movie? I think this one just, uh, probably just a regular beer, man. Nothing crazy. Not getting too wild with the cocktails. Just a blue light, man. Just... Exactly what I'm doing. That's how I'm feeling. It's just a, a beer movie. You know what? We just watched Clerks and we talked about that on our At The Movies episode. Hop over there if you haven't watched that one yet, but, uh. As Jay Muse would say, drink some beer, smoke some weed. They were just doing beers, but uh, <laughs> that's what I'm here for. And we are talking, it's after the movie, folks. I apologize. It's after the movies with Aaron Mook and my, my co-host, my brave co-host who put on a brave face to watch a film that may have hated, I don't know, but a film that he did not want to watch, I don't think. Um, it's James Lombardo. That's me. Coming at you. Coming at you. And we watched James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Before we get into specifics, one last thing. We need to cover, we've talked, about, we've talked about it enough, but we still need for anyone who's just listening to this episode, we need to cover our ground on, on superhero movies and DC movies briefly. So why don't, you, why don't you start, bud? I grew up reading comics and watching cartoons, the X-Men in particular, and I really enjoy the X-Men. Um, so therefore, when the superhero movies started coming out, my dad would take me to them, and I really enjoyed them. And I still do to this day. I really enjoy some of them. I think at this point, we get a lot of good and a lot of bad, uh, and a lot of the bad coming from over in the DC world. A lot of those movies are terrible. Uh so, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. I think Marvel right now is doing a lot better job as far as, like, the theatrical, like, big film productions. But that's where I'm at. Yeah, I do enjoy them. Uh, but I am very critical of them if they don't kind of live up to kind of the story. I think they have a lot. There's a lot of people that rely on these movies to be really successful. So that's where I'm at. I, um, I like superhero movies. I uh, I don't typically go see them in theaters unless there's like a unless it's like an outlier mm -hmm. uh, something like something like Logan maybe I would go see in theaters because it you know looked like a western or like something that kind of catches my attention I'm probably not going to go see like Captain America three or something in theaters but if there's something unique yeah, either honestly then, right there if there's something really unique then I will go see it. Um, I think they're fun. They're entertainment movies. I do get a little weary of like, this is phase five and we have these, like they put out the map that has like, here's the 20 movies to expect this year. And, um, I do think it like, I feel like it steps on maybe other block, even like, not even like indie films or small films, but I feel like even other blockbusters, like we just talked about the tomorrow war that we both enjoyed a lot. I would have loved to have seen that in theaters because it's an original story, um, an original IP. Uh, but all that being said, uh, Marvel is like, to me, factory made in the sense, I mean, all of this stuff is, but to me, Marvel is factory made in the sense that most of their movies are going to be solid. Uh, I know that when I see them and usually I have pretty much a good time, maybe not a great time. DC, I find a little bit more interesting because their movies are not as good a lot of the time, but I think that they do be try a little more risks, be a little bit darker. And when they pull it off, uh, it makes me happy. I, mm -hmm. I'm one of the only people in the world that likes Batman versus Superman. I don't think it's like perfect, but I, I do kind of like that movie. Um, so all that being said, uh, the original Suicide Squad, the first iteration, the Daryl Ayers film, have you seen it? Oh, have I seen it? Yeah. That is why yeah. I, I was very hesitant to watch this one, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, I just, I, it wasn't that great. It wasn't that, I don't know if it was a steaming pile of shit. And, I mean, if I watch it again after watching this one, maybe I'd change my mind. 
but there was a lot to be desired and a lot of just like questionable techniques and questionable editing and questionable character choices and questionable story and qu- I don't know the whole movie was questionable I don't know definitely the the editing is is for sure what stands out to me I remember thinking that it was fun but but I knew that it was like a bad movie and it was the first time that I could tell in theaters you know uh, you and I at that point weren't even talking about starting something like this but I think it's the point in my life where I was starting to get to notice things in movies mm-hmm. and like starting to notice that the editing like characters were getting from point a to point c and it felt like there was a whole scene yeah it felt like some things were missing and it just felt like i don't know i'd have to watch it i'd have to watch it again to give it an appropriate review but as i'm looking back on it i don't remember hating it but i also don't remember like being like oh this was great i remember being like 50 50 on it interestingly enough they tried to recreate uh after the film actually in post um, it was like a lot darker of a movie and then they tried to recreate uh, the success of the Guardians films, which is ironic because James Gunn now is directing the Suicide Squad. Uh, but they added, you know, all of these, uh, I remember Bohemian Rhapsody playing in the trailer and they've got all of these kind of like old songs that people mm-hmm. would recognize and they tried to make it a lot more lighthearted and fun. Um, I do think that iteration of the Joker is absolutely the worst thing on the planet and I think that people should stop hiring Jared Leto because he's um he's a bad guy and also a, b- a bad actor i think personally but uh beyond that i would be interested in, in revisiting it just to kind of see how my thoughts have aged so that brings us to today to the film that was recently released on hbo max as well as in theaters uh not doing so hot in the theaters in terms of financial gain um but movies drop to hbo max the same day you gotta wonder how many people are gonna free trial it and um that's kind of where we're at it is james gunn's the suicide squad you said you had some big thoughts on this one and i am just on the edge of my seat bud aaron viewers i thought this movie was absolutely a giant success um i (laughs) I absolutely loved Good. watching this. I had a ton of fun with it. I thought the story was great. It was funny. It made me laugh. It, it just, it, it was a feel good movie that I definitely laughed more than I was expecting to. Just some of the stuff that they said, I was like, that, that wasn't like a full, yeah, like, I was just, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Here's the, here's the real question. Because as we, as we talked about on the last, last shooting the bit, two episodes ago, John Cena, a man that distracts films for you. How did you enjoy his performance in this as a peacemaker? Let's just say that I really enjoyed his performance at the end. (laughs) He was good. Like I can't, like I can't take anything away from him because I don't think that he overshadowed the rest of the cast. I think in this one, I think it was, I think it was properly done like where he didn't like overshadow. I thought in uh, F nine that he kind of overshadowed it. Like he just seemed bigger than everybody else. Like not like physically, but just kind of like, you were like, Oh, he just kind of seemed over or this. He kind of seemed more in the back, like how it was intended. And I don't know if that was like, like kudos to James Gunn and the way he filmed it or whatever, but like, he definitely seemed like a supporting care character. Not like it was a movie about John Cena, which was great. And he's going to be in a lot of movies. I just saw like four, like just, like he's going to like four future ones. He's probably going to be in like within this year, next year they're doing, I know they're doing a peacemaker TV series for HBO max. Um, and I would presume I read that they are talking about doing another suicide squad, uh, but that it might focus on different characters the same way this one did, which I think is an interesting way to do it. Um, I like that James Gunn used this as a way to pull out just some of the most bizarre, characters uh specifically he wanted to find the worst dc character he could find and he he found the polka dot man Mm -hmm. and he he added him to the film and he said it was his goal to make him a tragic character and to make audiences care about him and in this movie uh he gets it at the end of the film unfortunately he finally feels like he's a superhero and then he gets uh smushed by a giant starfish in one of the most bizarre This movie was so goofy. Suicide, you know, like superhero movies ever made. 
Uh, and I think he succeeded, though. I love that performance. I love that character, and I thought that. Um, yeah, let's just let's just jump into it. So, like, I think the reason that this works for me, because it feels less, even despite the, you know, we always talk about the Marvel third act, which is like CGI big thing mm -hmm. destroying things, and then you know people team up to whatever. This had that, but it was a giant starfish that launched smaller starfishes, starfish out of its armpits that latched onto people's faces and took control of them. And it felt like you were reading a comic book. It didn't, it felt like it didn't take itself too seriously. It yep. felt like you were reading a comic book. And to me, it feels less like a, you know, big blockbuster DC serious. We have to make sure that our, we're competing with Marvel. Instead, they just let James Gunn be weird and be James Gunn. It totally works. Yeah, it was super successful. Like, I mean, I like... You know, I like Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. I think that's one of the most fun things, even from like the suicide or from suicide squad. Like it's just so fun to see her in that role. Like she just brings like such a level of like, like intensity and also like comic uh, relief at times. Like one of the, my favorite scenes is when she's running through it. It's just like all those flowers. Yes. It's so, uh, it's the, so beautiful. Blood, and, they, yeah. It's so beautiful and fun. These cartoon flowers and it's, yeah, it's so stylistic and, and different. I love all of the transitions as well, where it would say like where they were, where they were going, oh, yeah. like introduce the scene, you know, so-and-so prison, but it would be in the environment of the scene. So there would be like a bunch of trees spelling it out or, or something would wash up in the water, you know? Yeah. Um, I just thought it was like stylistically really, really cool. Um, the misdirection at the beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. uh, having a totally different team for the first uh, 10, 15 minutes. And then as soon as Pete Davidson gets his face blown <laughs> off, you, you're like, yeah, wait, what? And the whole team just gets uh, murked. That was including like, including Michael Rooker. I know it sounds bad and I'm sorry. I don't mean like any ill will towards him, him as a person, but man, I was like, there was some kind of satisfaction. And I was like, Oh, I don't have to watch Pete. I don't have to watch Pete Davidson anymore. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I get it. We all feel it. I feel it. No one wants to say it, but we feel it. I was upset um, though because I like uh, Fula Borg. I don't know if you're familiar with any of his other stuff, but like he's a YouTuber, and it was cool to see him get his like film debut, which I'm assuming at least for a big one. Was and, he? Huh? He's like a comic. He? he hangs out with like the Smosh guys too sometimes and does like the In, oh Javelin the Suicide Squad. It okay, Javelin. gotcha. Yeah. So it was nice to see yeah. him kind of like be in a big picture because I saw him like doing like funny videos with people. So it's cool to like see him in a big role like this. He didn't make it long, but hey, you know, it is what it is. No. Uh, there are some things that you that it, it doesn't ruin the movie for me at all. There are some things that I like. I love King Shark and I hate that I love King Shark because when Paul I look Stallone at King himself. Shark, <laughs> When I see King Shark, all I think is like, they're baby Yodaing me, they're grooting me. Like I know what this is. It's like the the cute, amorphic thing that I'm supp that's supposed to sell a bunch of toys. Mm. But I love it. I can't help it. He's funny. He's uh, you voiced know, by Sylvester it, Stallone. So how could you hate that? Exactly, and played by uh, the the stand-in was Steve Ag, who is a comedian who plays the guy that's working, like the computer guy. Uh, with the beard who's taking bets at the beginning oh, okay. and, and all that stuff. So he was the stand-in for that character. Um, it is uh, definitely much more successful in the sense of like... Was, it's he is almost so funny, funny like, though. I, I love that character. It's so great. And he's like, nom? 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 Right, my <laughs> hand? The hand bit. He's just like... like... <laughs> there, she's like, yes, that's your hand. And he's like, oh. Um... It is almost in presentation or something. It feels like the first Suicide Squad movie presented you with characters and we're just like, they suck. That's the thing. But this movie is like, they suck. Like, that's the thing. And like, it, it does something with that concept instead of just you kind of groveling and like, oh, these characters suck. It's like, it's, it's, there's a lot of redemption arc, I think, to some of these characters too. Um, the funniest bit in the movie for me that is like, you know, would be morally reprehensible if you think about them killing like 30 innocent people. But Peacemaker <laughs> and uh, who is the main character? Idris Elba, Blood, Blood, Blood Sport. Sport. Blood Sport. Uh, them, 
them essentially turning killing this village into a competition uh, and then finding out later that they killed an entire village of innocent people mm-hmm. is played for laughs. It's so dark and it's so funny. Um, I hope I hope to see because I'm just gonna add this real quick. Is like so, I love the DC characters, with the exception of X Men. Like X Men's like my top tier, like as far as like yeah. superhero stuff. But I prefer the characters from the DC universe more than Marvel characters. So I have I w- I hope that they just end up like I hope they take kind of this formula they did for the Suicide Squad and kind kind of use it to propel that and realize that they don't have to be Marvel. It's okay to be their own thing, and the true fans will come and it'll grow. But yeah, I definitely like the DC characters more than I like Marvel characters for sure. Well, and I, I yeah, like imagine them putting out ten movies like this, not in the sense that they all have the same tone, but if they found this new thing where they were like, oh, it turns out that if we give a director who is like has a vision and a voice, if we give them creative liberties and let them do what they want movie succeeds because these people like comics they know comics we're not going by some formula we're letting a some a comic book fan create a vision that you know comic book fans are going to want to come see and enjoy i would love to see 10 more movies that are like this in the sense that they are unique directors that have a story to tell and they're not afraid to make it their own uh Mm -hmm. i think people would love that you know i think that's how you that's how you best combat something like marvel as opposed to trying to copy their you know, formula. Yeah. I think they need, you know, it's, I wish I don't want to get too off topic here. I wish the justice league was more uh, successful because I watched. So I watched the original cartoon. I watched like the newer cartoon. Like I love uh, the justice league. I have just such a love for it. So I hope they figure out something for sure. Yeah. It feels so, I mean, I did not like the film. I've only seen the Snyder cut. It felt so Avengersy. It felt like the polar opposite of this. You know, it felt like it was supposed to be like uh, like an Infinity War or something. Uh, you know, like it's like they have they're indebted to building up this big thing and repeating the success that Marvel's had building. Cinematic I think they universe. just need to do like goofy, like a goofy movie, but but with the Justice League, they got to go out and fight. They don't need to be like building upon each other. Right. It's like the Justice League goes out and fights like Paper Bag Man for a movie. Like that'd be fun. What if you what if you catered to the people that are tired of the Marvel thing? I Instead think you of should. To do I think. The same thing, I, like, I know? think. I think that's how things are successful. Is when you cater to the other group of people, when you cater to the same niche, but you cater to the people that aren't really getting what they want from this thing. You do the other thing. Like that's in any for, like form of business or like market. You do like you give what you need. If the market needs something, you be that. And I think there needs to be this other side of it that's not like the same as Marvel. This was great because it felt like, tonally, it felt closest to me to something like Deadpool, which uh, I also enjoy. I would say Deadpool is a thing that, like, is when you, when you, (laughs) there are fans sometimes of things that make you, like, gravitate away from something. And I think Deadpool was just blown so into, out of proportion that you're like, oh, like, Deadpool, really? And then you watch those movies and they're very funny and they're very good because they break the formula yep and that's what this reminded me of uh maybe with just a little bit less fourth wall stuff going on but it, it felt like the same the jokes uh you know instead of, in a marvel movie a joke is so on the nose and it's always a character being like uh that happened yeah it's like, like a pause this, it's got that like joke right. pause like it's a stand-up doing like a like a like a routine or something seeing if his joke landed it's like Right, and it's not written like a joke. Like the thing is, in this movie, the the writing had actual jokes, mm-hmm. you know, with punchlines, and um, it just felt really well put together. I think. I think when they were trying to save Harley Quinn, and she comes yes. out, yep. and she's like, "What are you guys doing?" They're like trying to save you, and she's like, "Trying to save me? I could go back in." <laughs> I can, yeah, I can go back in, and you can keep doing it. The guy's like, "It's a, it was a really good plan too." <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's great. Um, I mean, I. I will say, like, I don't know that this is going to necessarily... I watched it a week ago. Some of it is already kind of left on my brain a little bit. Not in a bad way, but kind of in the way that these movies were intended to. Like, it just... It's a piece of entertainment. They're not uh, meant to. They're not meant to sit with you for a long time and make guy you think. They're meant for you to get a laugh and, and raise up your f- vibes for, like, a little bit and then go on and do something else. 
this is and the, i'm gonna pose this because i could be totally wrong um as somebody who is less of a comic book fan than probably a lot of people um i just want to pose this question to people and ask like because again i can be totally wrong and if you felt this i mean i know endgame was a big deal for a lot of people so if you felt this way recently like i want to hear about it in the comments i'm not trying to be condescending but i want to know like what the last time somebody felt like a comic book movie actually felt like a comic book because to me this felt very refreshing in the sense that it really did feel like it was coming to life off the pages i like the giant starfish so ridiculous as a as a movie pitch like even pitching that as being the end of your movie is so so insane but it works because i can imagine that on the page of the comic book and it is like i did research and the starfish comes from the comic books you know um and so does the stuff in the marvel universe all that whatever but it's like it's this idea of um you know you don't have to scrape the surface and you don't have to have these characters that you're sure are going to work with audiences like not everything has to be so serious. You don't have to be like, we need a Thanos. We need a dark side to be the master of all this evil for t- 20 films. I what agree if we with you. Pulled the craziest thing that we could find, which happens to be a giant starfish that makes mini starfish that controls people. And then what if we put a bunch of supervillains against it? Like 10 times out of 10, I want to see that movie instead of Spider-Man 4. Yeah, I think no? I'm not, like I'm probably on an island with this one. I would think this would probably is a hot take, and I know a lot of PP people watching this. So let me know in the comments too. But I just wish they were more like standalone-y, like movies where they were kind of like drawn yes. from other comics and less of like you know Marvel does this where it's like well this ending and this Captain American movie follows this one and this Thor movie, and then you got to make sure that you watch like this like mini series to get backed up. So now you're up to speed to go into this next like phase to fight this villain where it's like, I just kind of wish that like, if you want Thor to show up, have him like show up, you fight whoever. And then, you know, I don't think we need to keep like drying out this Avengers thing. It was cool. I was I, it, like, it was exciting to see this build up, but like, I just want more like standalone, like cool stuff. Like just make it fun and make it enjoyable. And I'm probably like one of, 10 people that actually want that to happen. No, I, I agree with you. Cause it, to me, it makes sense. You, if you want to see Iron Man two, it probably makes sense to see Iron Man one. It gets a lot harder when it's, Oh, have you seen WandaVision? Because you need to see WandaVision and you need to make sure that you see the end of captain America two so that you can understand the callback when you see Avengers four. Mm-hmm. And th- to me, that's where it gets like, you have to, it almost like, cor- you know, because it is kind of a fandom thing. It almost corners people into having you have to be a if you're a fan of this, it's hard to be a casual fan. Yeah. You have to like know your shit. And for me, that's why it's so much easier with the DC stuff. Almost it's almost like I enjoy it because it's been less successful. Like it's easier for me to catch up on DC stuff because they have like six movies, <laughs> you know? And like then like three of them are connected, maybe like loosely. Yep. Um and I I would prefer that it stay like that. Honestly, it's I I like I want people to be able to like things. Like I I don't care about Marvel. Like in the sense that I don't think people who like it have bad taste. And I like I said I have a good time when I watch Marvel movies. I I don't go to the theaters necessarily, but like I enjoy Marvel movies. So I'm not trying to shit on anyone or their taste. It's just tough for me because it's not my favorite thing in the world. And I want to be I would love to be able to be in the loop for these movies. So for something like the suicide squad to come around where there is no yeah harley quinn returns but you don't have to see suicide squad you don't have to see birds of prey to Mm -hmm. understand what's going on here yeah it's just just, a character in the movie i kind of just would like more standalone stuff and i'm glad that you so we're two out of ten people that actually want that i'm sure so we just got to find the other eight (laughs) wherever you're out there if if you're you're the other eight please comment if you are one of the eight we want to know um do you think this is your favorite dc movie to date uh not including the original batman movies yeah what do you mean by like original like the ones where they're like heath ledger was in it and kind of like the dark knight yeah. stuff like those were great i loved every one of great. those movies i think that sits at the top tier of movies for me as far as like this kind of like superhero genre but this is definitely way up up there within that list of uh dc movies for sure because aquaman was really bad 
I, re- I remember not liking that and I've not seen it. I'm trying to remember if like what other movie really like stood out to me. Now I'd have to say probably besides those like Dark Knight films, this is probably right up there. Yeah, and I consider those to be different because I think yeah, they're, they're not, not in like that. They're not in this. Canon, like, yeah, they're not DCU mm, kind of thing. Um, similar to like the Ed Norton Hulk and all of those right. movies, <laughs> like in the or X Men and Marvel. You mm-hmm. know, uh, until re- until very recently. In fact, I still don't know if that's. I think this is again. I don't really know, but uh, I don't. There hasn't been, to my knowledge, outside of Deadpool, an X Men character. Well, I think because Fox. I think universe. Fox owns Sony. Yeah. X Men. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I liked Wonder Woman. I thought that was good. I have not seen the second one. I don't um, think I watched I've, Wonder Woman at all. Like, I don't think I've seen any of those. I thought it was good. I I have not seen Aquaman. I did not like Justice League. I did like Batman versus Superman, but this is easily uh, way better, way more fun. Um. And they they made Vi- Viola Davis's character, who returns from the original Suicide Squad, she was a straight villain in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that they did not shy away from the and, and again too. This is the horror movie guy in me, but like the violence, the the gore, the heads exploding. You know, like they did not uh, shy away from this being an R rated, especially when movie. like the boomerang guy like said it and like cut the guys the one guy's head clean off like down the center. I was like, ooh, nice. Very Kill Bill. Nice uh, choice there. Kill Bill. Slices the, the face. Yeah, it's it was. Yeah, I thought James Gunn did it. I'm trying to look here. I don't know if we can do a season on James Gunn, but that might be interesting. I don't want to do a season we, on him if he's only done. I know he's done more. He's done. So he did one of my he, one of my favorite horror movies that I own, Slither. Um, I also recently watched the Belko Experiment, but he. Uh, wrote that he did not direct it. Um, yeah, I don't think the I don't think we can do a season on him, unfortunately. So he has done date, uh, Slither, Super, which is another superhero movie that is not related to a studio mm-hmm. that has Rain Wilson from The Office. He did one of the segments in the movie Forty Three, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy One and Two, The Suicide Squad. And that is it. He did. His, he was associate director on Tromeo and Juliet. He got his start with uh, Tromeo. Uh, oh my god, I'm losing my mind. Troma, uh, Troma Studios, which are uh, Toxic Avenger and all of these like independent B movie, gross, politically incorrect, goofy, uh, you know, exploitation films from like the 80s and 90s. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Maybe maybe in a couple of years we'll do a season on James Gunn, but not anytime soon. We could always do a writer season too. No, nope, it'd can't do it. Interesting. Nope. Nope. It'd be interesting to switch over and see pick or pick a screenwriter and see what they you know because yeah, he also wrote that. Dawn of the he wrote Dawn of the Dead, and I love that remake. I think it's one of the best horror remakes out there. We'll have to make sure there that our bosses are okay with us switching kind of the dynamic of the show, but I'm sure they'll be okay. Yeah, for sure. I'll have to check with the the top guns. <laughs> Mysterious bird, birdo. <laughs> bird, can, bird is our starfish. Bird controls all. <laughs> if oh man, well that's all I got, my friend. I don't really have much. Have uh, you watched anything recently? Yes, um, I watched. Uh, <laughs> I watched Pig. Uh, and I thought about proposing this for an after the movies. I didn't know if we would be down with paying $7 to watch it or not. Um, it is the story of Nicolas Cage. He is a, a uh, recluse who lives in a forest. He, is, he owns a truffle pig that he uses to forage truffles, and then he sells them to people outside of Portland to for high-end ingredients. And his pig gets stolen. And he goes on a quest to find his pig. And the trailer looked very John Wick, which made me hesitant because it, it kind of seemed like, oh, it's the same thing, and I love those movies, but it is not that at all. It is not an action movie. It is a drama. It is uh, very good. It is very good if you want to be emotional. Um, mm-hmm. It's also very good if you care about food and, like, what food can do for people or bring people together. It's a great food movie. 
again, it is like good if you need to cry. It's not a feel great movie, but it is. Uh, I highly recommend Pig. Um, let's do a season. Let's make. Let's do it for season four, and let's make season four all about food movies, like movies that have food as a central theme. And we can watch Chef by John Favreau. Food movies or Nicolas Cage. It has to be one of the two. Okay. <laughs> Or both. Five food movies, five Nicolas Cage movies, with Pig being the penultimate. Uh, mm. You're the the ultimate, the end, the the final episode will be Pig because it'll be a merger of both. Um, no, I recommend that. That was very good. We watched on Friday the Thirteenth. You watched Jason Takes Manhattan. It's my favorite Friday the Thirteenth movie. It is like it's the perfect amount of '80s cheese and slasher tropes. And Jason, he doesn't even go to. Man- He's in Manhattan for like 20 minutes. He's on a boat for an hour and 10 minutes. It's very. <laughs> You could tell the budget uh, limited them because when but he, he takes it, but he takes it. <laughs> spoiler: He takes Toronto. <laughs> it is not. It is not Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I've just been. I've been chipping away at my watch list. Um, I have a movie to propose for next week, but I did not know if you wanted to watch Gunpowder Milkshake. So I wanted to see run that by you first. I don't know. Okay, so I have picked a film. For next week, that has gotten positive reviews. It is a new film on Shudder. Uh, it is a horror comedy about a man who accidentally infiltrates a support group for serial killers. It's called Vicious Fun. It has David Kochner, uh, f- for champ from Anchorman, in it. Um, it's supposed to be every. I, I saw the trailer. I was like, that looks kind of interesting. And then all of the, I've not like actually read reviews, but everything that I've seen like headlines and things like that said that it was uh, a very fun movie and it lives up to its name. And it's so I think that when we get together, we will be watching uh, call girl of Cthulhu and for at the movies and then vicious fun for after the movies next week. Nice. Hell yeah. Down some good stuff. Hey, we we've been doing the show for a while now and uh, you know, if you watch, we appreciate you. Um, If you want to join us while watching, you can join our Patreon. Um, we have several tiers available, but even for the lowest tier, which is $3 a month, right? Yep. Yep. Um, you can join us as we watch these movies. We can schedule them. Uh, you can join us as we have a watch party and we sync up and watch the movies at the same time and talk about it. Uh, we'd love to to have more people get in on this. Great way to connect with people and, and movie lovers uh, as the pandemic maybe kind of sort of continues um but in addition to that uh hey you know if we've got regular listeners or watchers out there let us know what you want to hear about if you like the show uh after this presumably i mean there's so many things we want to do we have a list of directors and a list of like one-off seasons that we could do and uh you know but we would love to hear from you because if there's somebody out there who likes the show enough and you let us know hey i really want to know what you think about this director or hey this movies coming out could you cover this for after the movies i'd say that there is a better chance than not that we would be happy to do that so. yeah i would kind of like to know just a little add on to your question i'd like to know what people would like from the youtube channel like you guys want more clips do you guys want like maybe our top fives of certain things you want more shorter content of us like just us talking real quick or do you want us to rank stuff like let me know please because uh we're trying to figure that out because right now we're posting the video and we're doing the audio and it's kind of the same thing. I did, I did do a test run of kind of like when we talked about the shining backwards and that got 20 views from 20 different people. So maybe that's uh, kind of where you want to go, but we need you guys to let us know. What definitely. You want. We, um, I think in the future we'll be doing definitely a season. I don't know if it'll be next season. Cause I do, I am kind of craving going back to the, uh, the original, concept maybe for a season and then we do something different again but i'd like to do something where we each pick our top five movies that the other person hasn't seen and watch those together um i would love to do ranking we've talked about this as well that is a long form thing in the sense that we'll actually be testing it out probably around halloween because i think we're going to talk about the fear street films um, but I would love to rank something like the Halloween franchise. And the only thing is that it involves is just the time it takes to watch them. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, maybe people are interested in that. Maybe it's something that we, maybe that's a video that comes out, you know, once 
every quarter, once mm-hmm. every three months, we do a franchise ranking so that we have time to space out and watch them and then make a video that is, you know, closer to an hour, uh, 60 to 80 minutes, something so, or, or a two-parter, you know, something that's going to be substantial yeah, for you guys. For sure. So let us know what you're interested in. And again, uh, even if you don't subscribe, we love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for clinging on to us like a, oh. uh, like a star, starfish. And don't forget, as part of our Patreon tier, you get a shout-out in every single episode. So shout-out Jay Irvin and Dylan Painter. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you guys. So if you'd like to join them, go back about 10 seconds when Aaron explained what you get. So appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And, uh, again, uh, hop over to our channel at the movies if you haven't. Check out Clerks. Um, it was one of my favorite episodes we've done in a while. And... Uh, Next week, we will be talking about Call Girl of Cthulhu as well as, I already forgot, Vicious Fun. Um, all right, so we got we to gotta shut the bar down. James Gunn and the Suicide Squad rolls up, not to be confused with Suicide Squad or... Who can never get in. Or the first squad of this movie, because I don't want Pete Davidson in my bar. So... <laughs> um, we so we're, we got John and this is iffy because you know I know your thing with John Cena. John Cena pulls up, Idris Elba pulls up, Margot Robbie pulls up. Uh, the guy that plays the polka dot man pulls up in costume. Are we letting him in? Are we are we having drinks, Jimmy? We're letting him in. We're letting him in. We're having a couple of rounds. We're gonna we're gonna have a fun time. What about Big Brain Guy? Can he come in too? Uh, one of the uh, one of the doctors from doctor who no the big brain guy in this movie he's got a big old he's got a big old noggin he's uh the he gets ripped apart by a starfish yeah, you're talking about gaius yeah he was a doctor and doctor oh, who yes uh i forgot that, that was played by um uh what's his face this is, uh, it doesn't yeah, matter no it doesn't he's matter the old the old doctor mm-hmm. the old guy yep um, yes can can he come in is he having a drink with us only if he takes those things out of his head i don't know what the hell those are but they freak me out and uh, the starfish outside, we're going to toss it a little bit no. of water or something. <laughs> we got to we gotta turn all the lights off if the starfish comes by. It's not even all loud right. here. That's fair. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the Suicide Squad. We hope you don't take any of our opinions personally, but if you do, just a piece of your mind in the comments. I'm beating you. Get in there and, and let us know what you're... Like, tell us your thoughts. Let us know that we're wrong. Um... Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please get the hell out of my bar. Get out of here.